Listen, and I've said this before, and I use the illustration that really Iran is the arm. The hand is Syria. And the fingers are Hezbollah and Hamas. Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. So really Iran is pulling the strings. And I, I'm even going to take it a step further. I believe that Ahmadinejad has used uh, Syria and pulled the strings of Hezbollah and Hamas to launch a, uh, an attack against Israel right about the time that a UN report comes due that discloses how Iran is close to their uh, getting nuclear weapons. So it's sort of like a distraction, a diversion to get the attention off of Iran and their nuclear ambitions. So Ahmadinejad picks up the phone and calls up Hezbollah and calls up uh, you know, Syria and says, hey, uh, how about next week? Is that a good time for you? Let's start launching some of those rockets into Israel because uh, we want the world to now uh, focus on that and not on us. And if you look and you trace back to the last couple of times that the uh, bar has been uh, well, maybe the ante, they've increased or upped the ante, for lack of a better way of illustrating it. You can see that every single time there's been an attack from Hezbollah or Hamas. And there in the backdrop is Iran and some nuclear report that says, oh, by the way, uh, it doesn't look like it'll be 2012 that we have nuclear weapons. Looks like it'll be the end of this year. <laughs> have a nice year. Happy New Year. So... <laughs> Uh, Iran, it's not a matter of if Iran will have nuclear weapons, it's a matter of when and how soon. So this is really at the forefront now of the attention of the leadership in uh, Israel. This from the Jerusalem Post. Israel fears Syria is preparing to arm Hezbollah with anti-aircraft systems. Again, Hezbollah the fingers, like with Hamas. This one, uh, just on April 23rd, Syria says Ahmadinejad's speech reflected Arab views. Did any of you happen to catch Ahmadinejad's uh, speech uh, recently? Yeah, he's not a kind man. And he's no friend of Israel, obviously. But what's more striking to me is how Syria now is involved and almost synonymous with the likes of which are none other than Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in Iran. I call it the Syria factor. And what makes the Syria factor so fascinating is that it could be the catalyst that brings about the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy. Okay, some of you are saying, can you slow down for a second? Well, you started off Ezekiel 38, 39, then you go to Isaiah 17, 1. Now you've got me in Daniel, yes. Uh, hang on, it gets better. Daniel 9.27, perhaps a prophecy familiar to some, if not most. He writes, he, speaking of the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for one seven, a period of seven, which is speaking of the and prophesying about the seven-year tribulation. In the middle of the seven-year tribulation, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering, and on a wing of the temple, which means the Antichrist will allow the Jews to rebuild their temple without disturbing the Dome of the Rock, by the way, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Okay, let's try to tie this together, and I'll try to make some sense out of it by way of a possible Scenario. Now think through this with me, especially those of you who are students of prophecy. If indeed Isaiah 17 is fulfilled before Ezekiel 38, in other words, Syria, the Syria factor is removed from the equation before this allied attack in Ezekiel 38 uh, comes against Israel. If that's the case, then it's very possible that Daniel's prophecy in concert with that will be uh, fulfilled with the Antichrist subsequent to the destruction of Damascus signs the seven-year peace agreement. Now, this is what's interesting. Uh, For Zion's Sake website posted an interesting article titled, Ramming a Palestinian State Down Israel's Throat. 
Uh, this was April 18th. Yediath Ekranath, the largest circulation daily in Israel, is reporting that White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel, who's Jewish, by the way, has said that President Obama intends to force a two-state solution down Israel's throat within his first term in office, regardless of who is prime minister, and will use Iran to pressure Israel. M.J. Rosenberg, Washington Director of Policy Analysis, Israel Policy Forum, explains, Rahm Emanuel told an unnamed Jewish leader, in the next four years, there's going to be a permanent status arrangement between Israel and the Palestinians on the basis of two states for two peoples, Daniel 9.27. And it doesn't matter to us at all who is prime minister. He also said that the United States will exert pressure to see that the deal is put into place. Oh, really? <laughs> Sorry. Any treatment of the Iranian nuclear problem will be contingent upon progress in the negotiations and an Israeli withdrawal from the West Bank territory, the paper reports Emmanuel is saying. In other words, U.S. sympathy for Israel's position vis-a-vis -vis Iran depends on Israel's willingness to live up to its commitment to get out of the West Bank and permit the establishment of a Palestinian state there in Gaza and in East Jerusalem. This is also Zechariah 12. I, 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 we, won't, yeah, we won't go Zechariah 12, 13, 14, but you can put that in your hip pocket, study it later. I know some of you will. <laughs> you know, they have clinical terms for people like you and me. <laughs> but here's the thing, and this is interesting to me, because it's all fitting together. You know, to a prophecy teacher, without exception, the consensus is that never before have events moved as fast and prophecy been fulfilled as rapidly as it is today? Do you know how much I struggle with the prophecy updates? Not trying to, you know, put together a prophecy update. I figured it out, by the way. I actually prepare for two sermons on Sunday. <laughs> prophecy update and then the teaching in the book of Acts. And it's not a problem of, you know, putting together the teaching. It's a problem of... What am I going to say? There's so much here. I'm going to, oh, I want to, ah, oh, it's going to have to wait till, you know, next week. Oh, ah, but I should talk about, oh, but look at it. And I'm just, and I can't put it all together. And I'm looking at that clock and I hate that clock. Don't you look at that clock either. I'm always fighting against it and it's always fighting against me and there's so much here and I'm just thinking, no, please, God. There's, it's all coming together exactly as God's word said it would. Amen. And I see Isaiah 17, I see Ezekiel 38, I see Daniel 9, I see, uh, 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 <laughs> I said, <laughs> I'm sorry. But here's the thing, it's all coming together exactly as God's word said it would. Interesting, Rahm Emanuel would say in the next four years. He's quite sure of himself. There will be. We don't care who's prime minister in Israel. There will be a two-state solution. Jews and Palestinians living side by side in, quote, peace and security. Does that sound like something the Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonian church? Well, that's another prophecy. <laughs> He says that when they're saying peace and security, sudden destruction will come upon them like a woman in labor. And every, every speech you hear, especially as it relates to the, quote, two-state solution, you'll hear those two words in that order, exactly as the Apostle Paul said it. Peace and security. Peace and security. Peace in the Middle East. Homeland security. Peace and safety. However you hear it, it's the same word in the original language of the uh, Greek New Testament. But it is within the realm of reason that in the next four years, if not sooner, both the prophecies in Isaiah and Daniel could be fulfilled. And that's where Ezekiel's prophecy enters in. And here's why I believe this scenario is very likely to go this way. See, I believe that Isaiah 17, 1, not only possibly will be fulfilled before Ezekiel 38, but will probably be fulfilled. Why? Because Syria is not mentioned in Ezekiel 38. They're absent from that list of nations in Ezekiel's prophecy. 